I think I joined professionally the aerospace group before I joined the space exclusive group. Um, I worked as a systems engineer for a while for um, designing avionics packages um, for Bombardier aircraft. And at that time I started taking courses. Um, I got really interested in space education. I had always been, I would say, a hobbyist in space but I hadn't really bridged that gap yet between make, transitioning from it being a hobby to it being part of my career. Um, so I enrolled at the University uh, of North Dakota's Space Studies program. Uh, things there went exceptionally well. I ended up uh, leaving my full-time job and pursuing my master's degree full-time. And uh, coming out of there, uh, I had a lot of really great connections in the industry from a lot of the work that I had conducted um, as a graduate student. But I had my eyes set on Paragon. Uh, it was kind of, it was definitely where I wanted to work. So I had several job offers in hand. And at the IAC conference in 2016, I was at the point where I was like, okay, uh, Paragon doesn't have any positions opening at that time. Uh, I'll just submit my resume and explain what kind of job I would be looking for and just hope for the best. And uh, after one of my big presentations uh, down at IAC, I got the phone call that night that they wanted me to come in for an interview and I was excited. It felt like it was a, a good match. So I um, flew out, had a conversation with the engineers and uh, management uh, in Tucson, Arizona. And uh, I guess that's all she wrote from there. Uh, joined the team about a month later. We don't know very much about space. Um, in humanity's understanding of the universe and what's going on around us, there are quite a few, I would say, big gaps. So a lot of places where we're guessing, I would say, on what's going on, um, why things exist the way they do and how things function, the laws of our existence. And um, I guess, I had some issues earlier uh, in my career with challenge. One of my biggest things is I like to be continually challenged. So it was a relief, uh, I would say, moving into the space industry because for my generation and many generations to come in the future, I don't think there's ever going to be that lack of, of challenge because the the necessary knowledge that we need to obtain as a species moving forward is so outstandingly unexplored um, in these areas um, of the universe and our existence that I knew it would be a forever and lifelong learning experience. And that's really one of my big motivators and tickers. So I followed my natural curiosity towards the space sector, and uh, I would say that provided that additional level of intrigue and challenge that was necessary to not draw just myself, but I would say a very large percentage of our population to the interest of the space industry. And if you think about it, rockets is just such a small entry portion into where we need to be to really truly understand what's going on around us that we know less than 1% of the magical nature of our universe. I'm gonna say baby steps. <laughs> um, I think one of my skill sets that have served me really well and I think would serve a lot of people very well um, is that I focus on the thing that I'm currently working on and making sure that I'm doing whatever role that is or achieving whatever goals I've set for myself, either intrinsically or extrinsically, um, and making sure I'm doing that to my best ability before taking the next giant step. 
I think some of my biggest downfalls I've ever made uh, kind of in this career progression and in my life has been when I tried to skip too many steps of the ladder at once. Um, so just making sure that if I am achieving a well-rounded, and I think that's a big part of it too, a well-rounded uh, set of skills that are necessary for me to progress in the correct direction, um, those things start compounding. So it's really about focusing on what I have in front of me um, and making sure that that's accomplished before jumping into the next thing too prematurely. I'm still learning it, I think. <laughs> um, but I think one of the biggest lessons, not even necessarily just in my career, but in life, is to try to listen to understand before speaking to teach. Um, and that gets more difficult, I think, as I age, because we feel like we become more skilled or have a higher expertise in certain fields. So a lot of times I force myself into new situations and, and take on things that I'm not very good at to remind myself that as soon as we stop learning, we stop growing. So making sure that we're putting ourselves in other people's shoes and understanding perspectives and not becoming too close-minded in the ways that we're growing um, would be the most important lesson I've learned and in, in still learning in life. I would tell myself that just getting good grades isn't the answer. To make sure that I'm gaining new concepts and new skills to understand and retain them, not to pass tests with an A. Um, and that would include doing things outside of the things that are necessary to be quote unquote successful. So making sure that you're skilled in in multiple arenas in life and not overly focused. This is actually one of, I, I love this question because this folds so strongly into a lot of my future career um, aspirations and a lot of the stuff that I'm doing outside of work as well. Um, we develop systems and I've been working on a lot of those programs and running several um, of these, I don't want to call them IP generation. I'm going to say um, the work that we do right now that keeps people alive in space could, with not too much difficulty, be tweaked for terrestrial applications. And that's something I find extremely interesting and, and have been looking into a lot recently. Um, like the, the water quality that we expect to provide or that is mandated that we provide for our astronauts is orders of magnitude cleaner than what comes out of my tap water, right? At, at my house when I turn the bucket on. And, um, and we're in the good part of the world. Imagine what we could do if we took that technology that we've refined for space exploration and utilized it for the betterment of terrestrial humanity. I think that this is, this isn't only something that, sh this is almost a necessity, right? This is, this is something that we have to move into, at least I would have to move into in order to feel like the mark that I'm leaving is the mark that I intend to leave. So I think there's this beautiful, there's this symbiosis between the space community and the terrestrial community um, and especially in the life support sector where we can focus on things like water reclamation, air revitalization, nutrient recycling, how to set up systems for autonomous living that are not only lessons that we're learning because of the necessity to learn them for extra planetary habitations. It's also things that could benefit every country. I'm trying to think of any country that would be excluded. I, I don't think that there is a country that couldn't that couldn't benefit from a lot of the work that many of these companies are doing. So
yeah, I think it, it goes hand in hand and it's the natural progression of the way that it's, this industry is gonna have to move. Uh, with risk of being the crazy alien lady, there is liquid water on Mars. That's big. That's big. Um, and that's the beautiful thing about the space industry, right? There's law and space policy that you can get into. There's systems engineering and spacecraft design. You can be a rocket engineer. You can be... We need air traffic control eventually for space applications. I can't, we need doctors who understand the physiological aspect of the human body and during space flight. There's just, there's a place in the space community for everybody. And that includes the people who are interested in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. So I think this is a big one for scientists and the study group as well. So I think that's the most exciting right now. <laughs>